That's a that's a beaut, man. Hold on, I'm good, Mikey. to the Wilmington there's a little bit of a temperature break it's probably 55 58 up against 65 degree water so we're gonna keep steam until we find that break um, it's pretty rough out here we got a like a six to eight foot swell at about eight seconds and then there's a little bit of a south wind chop on top of that so it's been kind of a rough run but nothing unsafe that's why we got the bigger boot see a little bit of a rough go here we're only making not even 20 knots well, this boat, that's actually pretty slow. So I will catch up with you guys when we find that water and uh, hope we'll be start, start this canyon season off uh, in a little bit better fashion. So I'll All right, team, something guys. a little bit different this year. I'm going to try and give you some footage from just about all my trips this year. Uh, last year, I left out any slow trips or slow footage. But, um, yeah, this day, June 4th, it was so rough. But we found a beautiful, uh, you know, temperature break, clarity break. We were in awesome blue Gulf Stream water. Just too early, the tunas just were not there. My buddy boat had one blue marlin and one mahi, no tuna, and all we had was two bites from mahi all day. Yeah. Jack, what'd they hit, bud? Uh, Ballyhoo? Ballyhoo. I think this is a Ballyhoo too, yeah? All right. Oh, no, that's a bar. Ball. Ball all right, so we got a pair of mahi, the, the, the female. Oh, Got the mail here. It's a little tough because it's rough. Let's we'll see if we can't get them. Yeah, dude, that's a nice bull, guys. Beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're the, the male and the female swimming together. Yeah, we do. Wow. That, that class mahi-mahi is actually typically what you see down in uh, Central America. Uh, they're such a fast-growing fish. I've said that before in my prior videos. Um, they have a very short lifespan, and they get so much bigger down in the Pacific uh, because they're just eating and eating and eating. There's so much more forage there. Um, but yeah, that's that's a that's a really really respectable mahi. So pretty cool. So. Um, that's good. They're they're here for a reason. They're in this warmer water. There's got to be forage here. My buddy boat's marking uh, marking fish down 100 foot, so that means we see them to come up. And then uh, our other buddy boat just had one small yellowfin. So there's some life here. We found some good water. It's gonna keep pounding it out, and uh, we'll see what happens. There he is, guys. The man, the myth, the legend, Mikey the Mortician. Beautiful bull, spring mahi. That's a that's a beaut, man. Hold on, I'm good, Mikey. Drop the tail. Drop the tail. Yeah, that's a good picture. That's a good picture. That's a that's a 30 pounder, man. Mikey, that's a trophy, bud. That's what you see in Costa Rica right there. I don't need no Costa Rica. Yeah, boy. Where do I put this guy? Quick updates around uh, quarter to ten. No more bites. We found the break. Uh, there's really not much life here. Problem is the break, it's really out in deep water. And it's not pushing up on the on the hundred fathom curve, so it's ideal when you get that break that comes up onto structure. So the the break itself provides structure. The the clarity change, the chlorophyll change, plus the temperature change creates a, a barrier underwater. Um, but it's better when you combine that structure with bottom structure. You know the the hundred fathom curve. Um, so we're gonna give it another twenty minutes at this canyon. Um, if nothing, I'm gonna head one south. Um, the ocean's cleaning up a little bit better. So it's about 28 miles down to that next spot. So uh, I've said before, I, I don't mind burning diesel fuel. They make more of it. Um, 
you know, you already spent all this money to get out here. What's it's another 28 miles? I don't know. Uh, sometimes out here, you got to be willing to burn fuel. Um, it's not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll see, man. It's been a tough, uh, tough early season for us. This is our second trip. First trip was uh, pretty much terrible. Um, so hopefully we can make this one a little bit better. Good morning, Reaper team. It's uh, quarter after 2 a.m. It is uh, June 8th. Yeah, it's June 8th now. Team, I've had two slow trips to the canyon. Um, it's two worse back-to-back um, -back I've had in a long, long time. So I am jonesing. My yin and my yang are so off right now. I need a good trip. Um, we've got a bunch of buddy boats that have been fishing this area way up in the deep of the toms. Um, there's a nice little temperature break and it's got some fish. So we're running about 95 miles. So um, we got a, a good run ahead of us. I got a great crew. I got my good luck charm, Timmy Daly. I got big Dylan Lamont. Check out him on Dylan L Fishing on YouTube. I got Zachy and I got the ringer, cousin Mikey, big old German. So if you get a big eye, I'm gonna tie him into it. So I will see you guys out there. I'm super pumped. We got a long ride ahead of us. I got about two hours sleep. For me, that's like two days. So I'm ready. I'll see you guys out there. All right, so this day, it was just one of those days where, you know, all the signs were right, tons of life, beautiful water. We saw tons of bluefin up on top. Um, there were some fish caught, not a ton. It was just one of those days where there was just too many boats and it was just too darn sunny and nice. Uh, we ended the day with a couple fourth quarter undersized bluefin. Uh, Timmy actually hooked one on a popper uh, right before dark, but uh, unfortunately we pulled the hook. Um, actually broke the main line uh, for memory. So uh, just another slow trip, but yeah, we eked out a couple fish. So uh, here's some action. National Geographic. Let's see if they tear out again. There they go. Come on, guys. Guys, are... oh, here we go. There you go, National Geographic. You can see them. Oh, there they go. 45 minutes away. We got about 19 miles to go still. We're still running. Uh, I'd like to be fishing right now, but you know I worked all day yesterday and I uh, had to get some sleep. Guys are down in the cockpit getting stuff ready. I just showed you some porpoise. Yeah, they're probably playing with the weight. As you can see, we got all the lures already clipped on, ready to roll. All the value lures are tied on. And uh, yeah, once we get there, we'll get lines in. My buddy boats are out there. I heard there's a couple fish already being caught, so let's hope. I, I need my yin and my yang straightened out here. Also, you know, right when we found this break, I had pilot whales working, on, and yeah. literally just there about an hour before we got there, our buddy boat, I think, had four or five big eyes. Um, so we literally were just about an hour late to the party. We just barely missed the bite. Here you can see a bunch of porpoise going nuts. It was Nat Geo out there. Um, I thought we were getting our ticket pulled on the big eye, but uh, just didn't happen for us in the morning. All right, everybody. 10 after 12. I got a smile on my face. We haven't had a bite. But we're rocking out. We got some bad company on. It's beautiful out. We're making the most of it. Got some life here. There's been some fish caught here and there, not many. I think it's just two bluebird a day, too many boats, but we're hoping that they turn on this afternoon. So we're just going to relax, enjoy the day, stick it out, and maybe I'll make a video out of this. We'll see. I don't know. Team, quick update. It's 2:30. I took, I put a movie on. I went down for a nap. Uh, I think I slept for like 30 minutes. I felt the boat going in and out of gear. 
Apparently they saw some bluefin up on the surface. Uh, they're throwing plugs. Nothing yet. Uh, we still have yacht had. We have not had a single sniff. Not a single bite, not a single runoff. Not a skipjack, not a false albacore. Not a school bluefin, nothing. Yeah. three they were definitely bluefin nice fish probably 50 60 pounders just right up on top um, we threw a little plug at them um, they don't want to eat I, I think they'll eat later uh, it's good it's at least it's getting a little later in the day so Let's get back around and see if we can't corral them in and convince one to bite and it's pretty cool when you're on the bow waiting for the bluefin to come back up as you crack crabs look at him he's got the crabs on the boat <laughs> Picking him on the bow. <laughs> He's got a tough life up there. Look, let's wait for the 50 pound bluefin to come back up as I crack crabs. <laughs> We're gonna take our seventh inning stretch now. So please rise, remove your caps, salute the flag. Half time. Half time. So three days of trolling and a dead sea will get you. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. I know there's a lot riding on it, but it's all psychological. All right, team update. It is uh, 20 at 5. It's officially my slowest canyon trip ever. Uh, we have not had a single bite the entire day. We've literally been trolling since 6.30 a.m. It's now 4.40. And, uh, yeah, we haven't had a single bite. Um, never seen anything like this. I've never been on a slump like this, ever. Uh, I'm in my own head. My yin and my yang are all messed up. And uh, it's crazy. Just goes to show you. That's why I call it fishing, not catching. All right, we're going to give it till about 7, 7.30. Hope they come up. We've seen, pass through multiple schools, a 50-pound bluefin, hundreds of them. Enough. They just won't bite. So I don't know. Our buddy boats had two big eyes. Just need our ticket pulled. All we need is one pileup. That's it. One pileup. Which one's on? All right, watch that. Uh, watch that mid. All right, guys. So it's a uh, quarter to seven, and uh, we finally are, are tight here. So uh, I'm really not sure what he hit. Um, actually, I think it's a bally hit. Yeah. No, no, a wide tracker. Hit a uh, zucchini sterling tackle wide tracker, I believe. Um, so let's see. Stay calm. We've been waiting for this all day. Yeah. Guys are clearing the lines and uh, we'll see what we got. Look at him nailing it. Yeah, it was cool. 
Oh, he came in! Oh, he hit it! Dylan, run! Dylan, oh, you see that? Where's that man? was so cool! <laughs> yeah! Zach, do you see that? Yeah. That was so cool! Oh, you look at that! <laughs> oh, right there. Look at him! Nice look at him go! <laughs> yeah, you got him, Zach! Oh, that was so cool! Oh, my God. That was so cool! Do you see him in here? That was awesome! That was awesome! Oh, that was so cool! That was so cool! Oh, you popped off still? Yeah, that was a huge cool. They're eating now. That's the one right here, right with one right here. Oh yeah. The one just tried to eat that when you're reeling in. I'm just gonna reel it in, drop back. They might eat this uh the shoe too. Oh Zach, how many times did he bite it, dude? That was so cool. So yeah, guys, that was it. I mean, we literally just had that one blow up. Um, again, uh, Timmy hooked one on a popper right before dark. Uh, but yeah, look at that sunset right there. I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know. You got to check your pulse or something. I mean, that's just so pretty. Being out there in Mother Nature as the sun's going down 90 miles from home, there's just nothing like it. You know, sometimes the fishing's slow, and uh, you just got to focus on the fact that you're not at work. You're not. You know dealing with an unhealthy family member you're watching this beautiful sunset in the beautiful Atlantic Ocean and uh, that's what it's all about so this is us flying home at 26 knots in a beautiful flat calm ocean we had sent out the props this off season to Atlantis propeller they tuned this up real good and I've noticed a pretty big change in speed and fuel economy so thank you so much Ray at Atlantis yeah the boats running awesome so it's uh let's see it's 10 after 2 in the morning yep 10 after 2 in the morning uh, i've been up since um i don't even know when i think two o'clock last night i think something like that but uh yeah we're just getting in from the canyon uh, it was a really slow trip we uh just had two under blue fins missed a couple um i'm just on a cold streak like no other but um we're leaving the dock in about two hours 20 minutes again I'm going to go to one of my local inshore spots, hopefully get some bluefin at first light, um, and then we're actually going to push off and try and do some sharpening. So we'll see. I'm going to eat a little something. I just took a shower. I may close my eyes for about 20 minutes, and uh, that's all I need. So uh, I'll see you guys out there. I'll sleep when they put me in a box somewhere. Hey, hey, Reaper team, good morning. I am not the least bit tired. Welcome back, Chicken Joey. What's up? And we got our... Substitute mechanic, Crager. Thanks again, Craig. He helped us with a fuel leak, you the man. So we're just getting on scene here. We got some porpoise, already marked some fish. And I'm wide awake, baby. So a little redemption here. Let's see what we can do. Team, so it's uh, 6.43 a.m. and we're tight. So that didn't take long. We're trolling uh, for about 10 minutes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this one's probably a bluefin. So yeah, they're here. So that's awesome. I'm marking them right now, actually off the bottom. So. Uh, let's see if we can't kill this fish. We got Joey Jr. on him. We're pretty sure it's his first tuna ever. So uh, we'll see. There you go. Good job. Now, you should be good there. You may want to get that chaos in real quick.
those smaller ones, um, you know, the bigger ones you want to keep in the water and not pull them out of the water and you're going to harm them. The small ones you can, at least in my opinion, you can, you can flip them in real quick, try not to handle them too much, get that hook out, maybe a quick picture and just dunk them down real quick. You, you shoot them head first and bloop, right down. Uh, but yeah, that's a really small little bluefin. So hopefully uh, there's some bigger uh, class fish in here. Uh, the goal today though is a Mako. We're not going to troll for too long. I'll probably only give it till maybe 8 o'clock and then um, we're going to push to my honey hole and try hang a Mako here. Uh, we just wanted to see if we could put a couple bluefin in the boat real quick. So um, we'll continue trolling a little bit and uh, go from there. Keep them, Zach. Keep yeah, keep them. <laughs> That's funny. He's a keeper. Wow. He's a keeper. They just bleed him. <laughs> All right, team. So it's our second bluefin. We were going to let him go, but he uh, started gushing blood. So I don't think I, I can resuscitate that one. Pally who, Zach? That might be a better one. Fourth tuna bite, um, another wide tracker bite. So Sterling Chaos Wide Tracker, baby. Uh, in green, I think zucchini actually. So yeah, we're into them. Zach and I just keep laughing because we ran literally 98 miles yesterday and didn't get a bite till 7.30 p.m. And here we are, right off the coast. <laughs> Catching actually better sized fish. <laughs> it's awesome. Right there. Yeah, Sam, come on. Oh, come on. I saw him. Yeah. Tommy got a call or two about my house. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to put the front of the truck. Five inch fish. And just get ready right out there. I'm going to give it all you, Zach. Woo hoo 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 hoo. 
Oh man, I, I'd love to come here and chunk these. That was a little better. Come on, Zach. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, we'll keep that. that one. What do you think, bud? In the box, Zach. You want to keep that one, Zachy? Dude, they're spinning up sand like crazy. Are they? Yeah, let's keep that one. Right. Yeah, what the hell? Let's not get yeah, too greedy. Nice Hey, good job, Joey. Good job, bro. Hey, got um, Joe Senior. Get him while he's still lit up. Get a good picture of your son. Right. Yeah, get a couple real good pictures. See how he's got his stripes. Now's the time. a.m. we're on again this is uh, I think number six or number seven so I think this is gonna be our last one put this one in the boat and uh, we're gonna go kill the big Mako so let's see what we got so pumped team I literally I'm gonna put together a little little uh, I don't know I haven't slept in two days I can't even <laughs> speak I'm gonna put together a little uh, compilation video of the last three trips and it won't be any action till today No, you just, so I already have the design, and I'm waiting on, I actually patented it, not patented, I actually have a trademark patent on my label, on my logo, and the name. Um, you can design it. Yeah, no, but what you actually do, though, is you use a third party. I create the website, people go on and order it, and then a third party makes it, makes it and ships it. So I've never possessed the product, because well, that's annoying. I, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not packing this shit up. Pretty guy. Oh, that's a yellow one. That's a yellow one there. Let's see. Beautiful schoolie New Jersey bluefin. He'll be just fine. Zach, you show us how you dunk him, baby. Let's see. All right, team, so it's uh, around 5 after 9 now. Uh, just arriving on my little uh, sharking grounds here. So what I like to do is I totally stop the boat, I shut the engines off, I drift for a couple of minutes, and I get my track. And then what I actually do is then I'll, I'll motor up to, um, you know, where I want to start that drift, and I'll put out a, a, my chum bucket. And it's kind of like power chumming, I call it, or what I, I read when I was a kid and, and growing up. So 
Um, I'll do that for you know three quarters of a mile or so, um, and then uh, and then we'll get fishing. Uh, a lot of times, what will actually happen is specifically with Mako. Sometimes when you do this power chumming, you show up, you put one bait in the water, and you're in. It's weird. Um, when you're shark fishing, don't be afraid to make short drifts. It's interesting because Zach and I, our dads were never broke your slick. You put out your chum, you put out your baits, and you just chilled. You went to sleep, you ate lunch, that's it. Don't touch anything. Um, I kind of broke that when I started doing it on my own. Um, and it's been successful. I've done short drifts, and I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to the start of a drift and literally within five minutes caught a fish. I've even gone so far as ran 25 miles north or south and literally put lines in the water in five minutes we got to make up. So, don't be afraid to move. If you're there for a while, you don't see any life, you don't get any bites, move. So, these are our custom made shark rigs. So this is what we call baby bluefin. And Zach's got a fancy little yeah, rattle there. And you can dip in some bunker juice. Little chartreuse, little rainbow. And then super senior wants some blue or green. This is a good color. It's a good color. Don't yeah, that's that baby bluefin again. Oh yeah, there you go. Classic green. Yeah. Oh yeah. Classic green and white. All right. So really sad. You know, one of the fisheries I grew up, you know, and kind of earning my keep on was shark fishing. Um, and it was even better, you know, 10, 12 years ago when I started running my own boat. Um, but, you know, each year it just seemingly gets worse and worse. Really sad. You know, I've put in good amount of hours this year and we've really only caught one Mako that was probably about five to six foot. Uh, just a sad state of affairs for, you know, the um, state of the, the shark population. Just really sad. Um, it's something that I grew up doing. It's probably one of my favorite fisheries. But yeah, you know, a keeper Mako nowadays, it, it's like a unicorn even more than a big eye. But um, just really sad. While out sharking, this badass motor yacht came up on us. We thought it was someone that was going to, you know, invade our slick, quote unquote, which I'm not, I don't get too excited about, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, check this sucker out, man. He was um, steaming from the south, big, probably 60, 70 foot private motor yacht going to somewhere more fun than New Jersey or New York, I'd imagine, or coming from somewhere more fun. Really neat. All right, guys, got the spread set, okay, got the spread set, and look at Zach trying to fly his kite, it's great, it's hilarious, he's probably got an IQ of like, I don't know, off the charts, look at him, 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 look at him. <laughs> Dude, team, I know those weren't big bluefin or anything like that, but man, I needed that. That was cool. You know, right before we left the canyon last night, we had one real good blow up. And then actually right before we left, Timmy hooked up on a popper. So that was cool. And then today it was like, man, we found him within 20 minutes. So that was really cool. And then it was like, boom, I got a pattern. I mar you know, I marked them. I had a spot where I was getting bit. And then, boom, every time we'd make a pass, bam, we got bit. And I was like, man, I just needed that pattern to, to follow. So, man, my yin and my yang are finally back. I'm pumped. Now we're just sharking, relaxing. It's beautiful out here. I mean, look at this team. We got our float set. I'm over some good structure. So I am super pumped. So hopefully I can show you guys one of these beautiful Mako sharks. Um, if not, I'm excited. So I'm gonna put together a compilation video of these last couple of trips. It's been rough, um, but that's fishing. You know, you gotta stay positive. And now I'm back, baby. So here we go. Pug.